Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect, the state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas from applied research and development, testing and engineering, qualification to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker this evening is Patty Morrison. Patty is an image strategist who has been tr transforming the way people look for over 25 years. She helps people transform their appearance to best reflect who they are and what they do. Patty is a published author of many articles on personal style, including her best selling book, First Impressions Dressing for Impact. Vancouver Business Network and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Patty, Patty Morrison, a warm, warm VBN welcome. How you look and dress will have a massive impact on your success. This is because how we look, how we dress has a powerful impact on us and others. How we look affects how we feel. So have you ever had that experience where you know something really important is going to be happening that day? So you get up a little bit earlier, you spend a little extra time on your hair and your grooming and makeup for women, and then you go to your closet and you pull out your favorite outfit. And that day, you absolutely feel fabulous. The whole day gets, just goes great. And then there are those days when we think nothing important is gonna be happening. So maybe we sleep in a little longer, we push the snooze button a few times, then we get up and we, we spend less time on our hair and grooming, and then we go to our closet and we pull out something that we haven't worn for a long time, or maybe somebody gave it to us and but we spent money on it and we think we should be getting better wear out of it or it just doesn't fit. No matter what, it's just not one of our favorite outfits. So how many of you have had that experience? Yes. And then inevitably, you run into somebody that you haven't seen for a long time, and you think, why did I wear this outfit? Does anyone, anyone want to share one of those experiences? <laughs> well, I think we can all relate to it. How we look also has a powerful impact on others. And there's studies that show in the first five seconds, people decide if they like us, if they trust us, and if they can relate to us. So before we even open our mouth, people decide if they're even interested in what we have to say. But then there's another motivating factor. On those days, okay, it's very important like how we, how we feel and how um, other people see us. But then there's those days where you think nothing's gonna happen. And for me, this is like the days when uh, you know, I'm working from home and I think there's no reason why I have to go out and I think I'll just keep in my exercise clothes a little longer and maybe I won't even do my hair and makeup. But then I remember what I tell everybody else and that's that we have to be prepared for the suddenness. So when I actually have to go out and get milk in the middle of the day and I run into somebody that I haven't seen for a long time, I'm so glad I took the time. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Yes. So the other thing I found is that most people have no idea how other people see them, either positively or negatively. So in this photo here, the woman on the left, what do you think her occupation is? She's a horse trainer. Horse trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have an idea? Yes. Teacher? IT. IT? Yes. Anyone else? Physicist. Physicist, I love it. Well, would you be surprised to know that she's a wedding planner? She plans high-end destination weddings. So when she stood in this room of complete strangers, and I asked the group, if you were planning a $100,000 wedding, would you hire her? And everybody unanimously and spontaneously said no. And they said that they, that they thought that the wedding she planned would be boring and unimaginative, and that she planned low-budget weddings. So. Bobby Joe said, I was shocked to hear that people would not feel confident purchasing my services based on their first impression of me. Mm -hmm. Changing my hair and clothes has positively impacted my business. So you can see we just, a lot of times women have their hair pulled back like that, so it doesn't actually frame their face. So we pulled her hair, she has awesome hair, and we did light tasteful makeup, and we changed her glasses, and we put her in a great outfit, and now she looks creative and successful. 
So here's another woman that uh, we worked with. And what do you think her job is, the woman on the left? University. University <laughs> student, yes. She's a nurse. A nurse, okay. It can be a horse trainer. <laughs> yes, you know, I see when you look out of a sea of people, a lot of people look like vanilla. It's very hard to kind of tell people, but very few people stand out. Okay, well, she is a massage therapist, a very successful one. And so um, we changed her. You see how just reproportioning people's clothes can actually make them look taller and slimmer. And so you know, the woman on the left, would you think that you were going to be paying very much for her massage services? No, no. No. But the woman on the, the right, would you pay more? Mm -hmm. Yes. No comment. I would. <laughs> anyway, she's only promoting her business, right? So, you know, who looks like they'd be giving a better massage? And she said the feedback from complete strangers about their first impression of me really helped me to become open to change. And she said, I love my new look and I feel confident. I learned how simple and not as complicated as I once thought fashion must be, once you know the rules. So if anyone would like to have an objective opinion about their outfit at the end, we'll, uh, we can accommodate that. So every business person has a success toolbox. Now, what do you think would be in a, in a business person's success toolbox? Cash. Cash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pardon me? Pen. Pen? Yeah. Yes, I love it. Laptop? Laptop, yes. Business card. Business card, it's good. A book. A book, business book, yes. Website? Website, yes. Certification? Yeah, good. Okay, and a couple more yeah, market, marketing materials and social media presence. So those are just all, kind of all the basic things that people have to get into business. The other thing is it goes without saying that we assume people in business are gonna have expertise because if you don't have expertise in a great product, you're not gonna be successful in the long run. But next to being successful or having the expertise is having excellent presentation skills because how you look can be your number one marketing tool and it opens the doors of opportunity and it, it helps you to feel confident and uh, you can be open to greater opportunities. In a few moments, we're gonna talk about the five critical elements of a successful image a transformation. But before we do that, I just wanna tell you a bit of my background so you can see why I'm so passionate about everybody looking fabulous. So, my goal was never to be an image consultant. I didn't even know that was a profession when I was younger. And so um, when I was young, we didn't have a lot of money, but I loved having new clothes. So when I was seven years old, my mom taught me how to sew. And so this is my two brothers and my sister, and this is me in one of my complicated corduroy dresses that I made. <laughs> and later on, I took pattern making and design, but it was strictly gonna be a hobby for me. Then when I was in grade 12, you know the career counselors that come into the school, and they said, well, you're good in math and you're good at organizing things and you love systems so you should be a computer program and systems analyst and you get paid great money i thought perfect this is a great job for me so i went to bcit and i got my diploma there and then my first day at my corporate job i realized i had to come up with five professional looking outfits for every day of the week and i realized i only had my student wardrobe to go through so I remember like trying on clothes and having this huge pile of clothes on the bed before I figured out what to wear. And whatever I figured out to wear, I was never happy. I never felt like I was appropriately dressed. Has anybody ever had that huge pile of clothes, had tried them on and on? Yes, and such a frustrating experience. So then, uh, okay, so, um, right. So then I would go shopping on my lunch hours. So of course, being a sewer, realizing how inexpensively I could make things and never having spent quality clothes. There's no way I was paying for things at full price. Mm -hmm. So I would be a sales shopper. So I'd go straight to the back of the store and I'd try things on. And if I thought they looked good and, and uh, they fit and the price was right, I thought I found a great bargain. So then I'd take it home. But then when I got it home, I realized I didn't have anything in my closet to go with it. So then next, I mean, I did this like every day, shopping on my lunch hour. I'd go there, go to the sale, 
racks, try these things on, get more bargains, bring them all home. Now I had a huge problem because now I have so many clothes and nothing goes together. So when people tell me that they have this closet full of clothes, but they feel like they have nothing to wear, I totally get it. So then I thought being a systems analyst, I should be able to put together a, a system for dressing. So I started watching what people were wearing and looking at the, at the store windows and looking at how people put displays together and reading these fashion magazines. And pretty soon I got really good. I realized there's a science putting things together and there's a lot of details that go into it. So I started, I got really good for myself. And then my colleagues realized that I was really uh, changing my look and all the things I was doing and they started wanting me to help them. So then I realized that there's a lot of people that have these same wardrobe problems and they weren't getting a lot of help. So one day I decided I'm going to open a clothing store. So my goal when I opened the clothing store was to be able to dress every woman to look fabulous. So I started putting on seminars where I showed people how with 10 pieces in their wardrobe, they could have 40 different outfits and how to coordinate things. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I realized I needed more training because women would come into the store and I put outfits on a certain person and they look fabulous. And then, you know, a few people later, I tried the same outfit on somebody else and it didn't work. And I realized like people have different styles. Everybody doesn't look good in the same kind of clothes. Mm -hmm. So I got very curious and I researched the uh, people that were doing training. And I found the number one image strategist in North America at the time was Robert Puente. And he was based in San Francisco. So uh, image consulting was just coming along. And so I went to one of his um, workshops. Well, when he walked onto the stage, I was totally blown away. Okay, you'd expect the number one image strategist to be impeccably dressed. And he definitely was. He had his, his fantastic Armani charcoal suit with his crisp white shirt and a fabulous tie. But that wasn't what impressed me the most about him. It was how he viewed people. And he taught me to actually look at every single person as if they were looking their absolute best and they were on the front page of a magazine. Not necessarily a fashion magazine, it could be Time magazine or People magazine or a fishing magazine or, or uh, whatever kind, you know, whatever would kind of suit the dent of the person. And what I find, the biggest thing he taught me is how to recognize and determine a person's style. And um, the biggest mistakes I find in people's closets is from buying clothes that are not, don't match their style. And he also taught me to look at every aspect of a person's appearance. So uh, it was the whole overall, not just the clothes. And when I was looking at uh, determining what their style was, have you ever, um, when going through people's closets, I noticed that the things in their closets that, that they didn't, that weren't them, were things that somebody had helped them. So has anybody had that experience of going shopping with a friend and having them help you pick something out? <sighs> Yes. Yes. What's your story? Story is just a girlfriends who insist on buying me clothes, and they just accumulate and accumulate and accumulate Great. to the point where I have no idea where they're from. You know my example. Um, it's usually those clothes that someone else has picked out for you is their style, but that's not your case. You know, they're picking out your clothes. Right. So the thing is that a lot of times you have to have an opinion too. If you don't feel comfortable in something, most people feel, or a lot of people feel, I just have no style. I don't know what looks good on me. But I find that when you actually kind of talk to people, when you try something on, they feel good in it or they don't feel good in it. So the, the goal is to trust yourself. And I know that when you're in a store and a salesperson's trying to sell you something, you're actually trying to stretch yourself. You're like, I always buy this style. I should try something new. But a lot of times it's what they suggest that you buy new isn't exactly the right thing. So after training with Robert Ponte, the, the model for my store completely changed. So when a woman would come in and bring a blouse to try on, I'd encourage her to go home and bring the rest of the pieces of the outfit and bring them to me so that I could actually make sure that it kind of all went together. So then after operating the store for 13 years, it was time to close it because I wanted to expand my consulting business and be able to work with men, women, young, older people, and also not go and buy into the store because that was uh, very time consuming. So as, as an image strategist now, I've spent over 25 years transforming how people look. 
and I help people build their wardrobes. But I work with an amazing team of hairstylists, makeup artists, estheticians, photographers, videographers, and they're all just as passionate about what they do as I am. And we always say there's no problem in the area of appearance that we can't solve. So I recently wrote a book called uh, Dress First Impressions of Dressing for Impact. And in this book, it took me a year to write it, it's everything in the last 25 years from buying millions of dollars of clothes as a buyer and then dressing over 3,000 men and women that I find they need to know to actually be able to build a wardrobe. Because in the fashion industry, the fashion industry tries to keep people um, feeling like they don't really know what they're doing. And their job is to get you into a store and have you buy random pieces. This is why people have a closet full of clothes, but they don't often don't feel like they have a wardrobe. So they get you buying lots of different things. And just examples like first black is in, you know, there's so many, if you want to know how to build a wardrobe, then check out my book, First Impressions Dressing for Impact. And it just became an Amazon bestseller. But in this, there's so many um, stories about why, about how to do this. So I was just saying that, um, what, this, what the fashion industry will do is they'll bring out black. So people will be shopping, they'll be buying lots of black for a few years. Then what they'll do is switch it over to navy. So now people start buying navy but because they get saturated with black and they want women always want something new. So that's simpler for men too. Uh, we get to talking about men's wardrobes. And um, so then women start buying navy, but now they have to buy navy purses and navy shoes and navy accessories to go with that. And pretty soon black, brown will be coming out. And then brown comes, people do this. And then people like me go in there and we figure out what of the, which three of these dark colors do you want to work with? Because most people can't afford to maintain a huge wardrobe. And unless you're a glamour person who just loves having lots of clothes, it's it's distracting because you know most people that I work with have a life, they have other priorities in their life. They don't want to spend their whole life maintaining a wardrobe. So there's keys to actually having a small wardrobe fewer pieces where everything kind of goes together. Oh, and I also put together a certified image strategist training program where I actually train people to be personal stylists. So earlier on I said makeovers were the key to changing people's lives. And um, here's a few people that I recently worked with who actually um, talked about how a successful image transformation changed their life. So this first woman here on the left, uh, she's, a bit, she's a business consultant. And uh, she, she said, I dreaded getting dressed in the morning. I had a closet full of clothes that I no longer wore or felt good in. Those great deals from the outlet mall tended not to work as well as I had hoped. So we gave her a fresh new look. We gave her an updated makeup and gave her a great hairstyle. We changed her glasses and I put uh, you know, went through her closet and got rid of everything that didn't work. And then uh, we put together what did work and added some clothes to it. And you see how she just looks like a much more fresh, vibrant kind of person. And, and uh, Susan said, this was a great investment in myself. I have a smaller, more efficient wardrobe and I feel confident wearing it. Going through the makeover process has made it faster, easier, and more enjoyable to get dressed in the morning. And I feel like my style and overall appearance better reflects me. The other thing I always encourage my clients to do is get a photo shoot because um, everybody needs photos. And most people, a lot of people feel like they don't take good photos. But if you work with a great photographer and take pictures of lots of different of your outfits, there's so many uses, especially with social media these days. Everybody wants to post a, you know, a good picture of themselves. And if you're in business, you need social media for all different kind of posts. And you don't want to be posting the exact same outfit in 15 different poses. You want to have a variety of different kind of poses. So um, I really encourage everybody to get a professional photo shoot after you've done your hair and makeup and clothes and outfits. And here we have Becca and she's an engineer and she's just recently uh, launched out on her own to start her own business. And she said that she wanted a look that was professional and credible and so that she could network and meet new clients. So Becca says, it seems that people see me more now. More people that I don't know make eye contact, open doors, and make conversation. I'm going to spend less money on clothes in the long run, and it will help me in my career. So can you see the changes that we made to her? Oh, yeah. What, what do you see? Like, what, what do you think is the most? Uh, her hair is uh -huh. 
hair, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you see how she doesn't really have a style where when you actually work with your style with your curl, you can do your hair in a short amount of time. And a lot of people feel like they've been to those makeup counters and uh, people have put makeup on them and they don't want pancake makeup, but it's really good for people to get a makeup update every once in a while because you can get really bored doing your makeup and see what a difference it makes. You know, it just makes her features stand out. It doesn't look like she has makeup on. Mm -hmm. And see how it's all the little details like the fabrics and the, the accessories that kind of make the difference. And jackets are, jackets are very important. It's what I call the third piece. And jackets, vests, and cardigans, they're the most expensive piece in your whole wardrobe, but they actually add to the outfit. So if you just wear a top and a bottom, then it's not really a complete outfit. And here's another woman, she's a notary, this is Flavia. And uh, Flavia, she was taking her business to the next level because now she was doing a lot of interviews and video, uh, video recordings and she felt like her, her look was a little old. So we did her hair and makeup, we went through a closet, we updated it, got rid of things that didn't work, put together the outfits of the things that she already had in her closet that worked and then added a few new pieces. And then we did a photo shoot with her. How, what, how do you think she looks different? Yes. Uh huh. Her earrings looks better, more uh, stands out uh, more than before. Yes. Yes. The little details about the accessories are so important. It's important to buy metal before you buy color too. It's richer looking. It looks uh, classier. 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 Yeah. Yes. And I like the choice of color on the, on the jacket. It brings out fresher color on, on the face. Yes. And you know, do, do you think her look looks more current? Yeah. Yeah, she looks fresher and kind of younger, right? More vibrant. And you know, that's really true. People, you know, people in Vancouver look above average, right? Nobody gets arrested when they're walking along the streets. But you know, how, you, how your appearance treats people is how they'll treat you. So if you have an appearance that uh, makes people kind of moves people, then they more want to be around you. It's called more attraction rather than promotion. And Flavia says, I now feel confident in my more visible role, knowing everything works together and my clothes reflect who I am. And now we're going to talk about the five critical elements of a successful image transformation. So these are set success goals, purge what's not working, intentionally build a wardrobe, schedule fitness and fun, and prioritize self-care. So we're gonna go through that. So the successful, um, setting success goals. So when I start working with a client, I always ask them, why are you having an image transformation at this time? And what results do you wanna get? And how are we gonna measure whether you had success? Well, business people always say to me, they wanna increase their income, they wanna increase sales, and they want to attract higher paying clients. Uh, people also think success is just being able to go to their closet in the morning, knowing no matter what they choose to wear, everything works together and they have the perfect outfit for every occasion. And I call that effortless dressing. And then the other thing is a lot of people just think success is being able to walk into a room knowing they look great and having no negative attention on themselves and just being able to be there for the people that they're with. And you know, I, I think it's amazing how many people don't like, I always ask my clients, do, do you have that ticker tape that kind of goes off in your head when you walk into a room and you're kind of wondering about the outfit you're wearing? You're not sure if it's going to be right. Or I know somebody mentioned earlier about um, not knowing what they should wear to a particular uh, occasion. Um, you know, just wondering, do I look okay? And checking out, I wish that, you know, I see how that person's dressed. I wish I knew how to put outfits together like that. Or, you know, this clothes, these clothes are a little too tight. You know, I just gained a few pounds there. I wish I had worn something different. And people have this little ticker tape going on. Have, have you ever walked into a room and had that ticker tape going on? Yeah. Yes. And has anyone thought of anything else besides that? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, the goal is to be able to walk into the room and just know you look great and then just be able to focus on the people that you're with and whatever you're there to do. So if you were to make an investment in your wardrobe right now, well, what results would you want to get? Does anyone have any feedback? Yes. I want to stand out. You want to stand out? Yeah. Yes. Confidence. You want more confidence? Yes. Confidence I can 
change the world. That's the one thing you can. Good, good. Yes. Pardon me? Comfort. Comfort. Yes. Can I just say something about that comfort? You know, the thing is, whatever you wear, you're going to be wearing things that are comfortable. Okay, if you're going to, if you're going to, let's say here, you're going to um, a business meeting and you're wearing uh, a suit. Okay, that's for a particular thing you're comfortable doing that. You wouldn't wear that same business meeting to play on the floor with your kids or the same, the same suit, right? So, and you're not going to wear your pajamas to go to work. You, like there's so many things that if you're wearing the appropriate clothes for the occasion, then you'll be comfortable wearing those kind of clothes. Is yes. there anything else that people would like? Yes. Status on uh, making a statement. Making a statement, yes. You also want to fit into the environment that you are participating in. Yes. You have to be dressed for the, the environment you're in. Yes, you want to be dressed for the environment you're in. You're in. And I always say that it's better to be a little overdressed than underdressed. Sometimes you intimidate people if you're overdressed. Yeah. Yes, if you're way overdressed. But you know the thing is, there's different categories of clothes. There's weekend, there's sport clothes, which you only wear for exercise, which in Vancouver, people often wear to business. And that's why companies call me in and say, you know, people are wearing their exercise Lululemon to work or their pajamas, and you've got to upgrade the image. <laughs> so there's sporty clothes, there's weekend wear, which is like things that you can kind of sit around at your house, you can get dirty, you can cook, you can just enjoy yourself. I always say, if you, you should, in your weekend clothes, you should be able to sit on the couch and watch TV comfortably. And then there's dressy casual clothes. And those are a little bit dressier. Sometimes those are dry cleanable clothes. You know, you can wear that if you're going over to a friend's for, for dinner, or um, if you're gonna go to eat somebody at a nice restaurant downtown. And business casual is about the same as that, about the same dressiness. And we're seeing a lot of business casual is kind of the norm um, in Vancouver now. And then there's presentation clothes. Those are basically suit clothes. So um, I only really see that in the corporate, uh, the law and accounting offices now, but it's always interesting to have a, you know, business casual is usually appropriate for kind of anything business wise, but it's good to have a suit too. And then dressy casual, or uh, sorry, elegant evening. And that's for something. So you actually look like you dress for the occasion. So I always say to people have something that you could wear to a wedding. And that this dressing for men is so much simpler because men could wear a suit to a wedding. Whereas women, you got to have like, for a wedding, you want to have probably something a little bit nicer. And then if you have a couple of tops that you can wear to like go to a, you know, a house party at Christmas or whatever, or to a nice restaurant, if you just have those couple of things, you would be appropriately dressed for wherever you went. And you wouldn't have to wear your work clothes to go to a dressy event, and you wouldn't look like you're um, dressing too casual. The second thing about... Can you comment on ties, neckties? Yes. <laughs> what would you like to know? Just your opinion. For some reason, they were around for a hundred years. Yes. And now they're gone. Right. Except in some circles. Yes, they're very good for presentation kind of clothes when you're wearing a suit, you know, to have them. But you can also wear an open neck too. And you see a lot of young people kind of for that business casual look, wearing like pants and a shirt and a tie. But you're right, they're not as popular, and it's definitely a more dressed up kind of look. And it comes with a different style. Some of them are very large, some of them are very thin, and some of them are very Yes. Good. So, you know, I always say with any kind of clothes, you don't want to dress. I, I put together this model when I was buying clothes for my store. Because after you've looked at 50 lines in a day, you're like, oh, is everybody really going to be wearing tight patterned uh, pants to work now? You know, you kind of start thinking when they tell you that this is what everybody's going to be wearing when it's just the trend. So you don't want to buy things that are very trendy, and you don't want to buy things that are too classic. You want to buy things that are classically adventurous. So if ties get very narrow or ties get very wide, you kind of you want to follow the trend but not be trendy. Because the thing about trendy clothes is they don't last that long, right? So you don't want to have disposable yeah, clothes, right. especially when you're buying quality. So the next thing you want to do to have a successful image transformation is purge what's not working. So most people start in their closet and it, it's important to purge what's not working because it can be very confusing. What you want to do is find out what you actually have to work with. So get rid of anything that's like too tight, too big, um, you know, it's worn out, maybe it's dated, or maybe you just are tired of wearing it, or maybe it just, you're just, you don't like it. You don't feel good when you're wearing it. Get rid of those things and just keep the things that you feel really good in that actually fit you right now. 
And you know, when I'm closet cleaning, I find the hardest thing for women, they're always wanting to lose weight before they call me. So I always say, the best thing to do is to have a few things that actually work right now, and then we'll take those things that you're, you would wear anyways, that maybe are too tight, or you'd wear them if they fit you, and we'll put them in a separate spot. We'll put them in a bin, okay? And then we'll keep those clothes, and next, we'll review them in six months or a year when we kind of look at the wardrobe again, and then they feel like, she's not take, she's not telling me to get rid of those clothes. Okay, and many clients tell me that once they clean their closet, then they clean everybody's closet in the, in the house, and, um, and they even start decluttering their whole life. Has anyone ever done that? You start and then it gives you the momentum? No. Yes. <laughs> Good. And then you want to intentionally build a wardrobe. So you actually want to shop with a plan to build a wardrobe. So once you've gone through that closet, you've purged everything that doesn't work, you make a list, a short-term and a long-term list of what you're missing to make your whole wardrobe work and then what you want to add, what pieces you want to add. And you do this all based on your lifestyle. So if you've had been through a transition in your life, either you're getting into the workforce or getting out of the workforce, you're getting more casual, or you're getting more dressy, you're going to need more clothes in capsules to uh, represent where you're spending most of your time. So you want to make a list of that and figure out what it is that you're needing. And then based on your budget, you go shopping with the plan. So you no longer just randomly go to stores and try to see what you can pull out. You actually have a list because most people, um, even if they have a lot of money, they don't want to spend their whole budget on, on maintaining a big wardrobe. So buy what you need first and have a, a smaller wardrobe, everything that kind of goes together. So decide if you need casual clothes or you need business clothes, are you looking for evening wear or are you looking for shoes or do you need accessories or outerwear? And I noticed a few people were saying about the problems they have with shoes. Everybody has something that they're working with, some, some problem in their wardrobe. And shoes are a big deal because, um, especially for women, there's their problem because um, women have high shoes and low shoes and sometimes they can't wear, they can't wear heels. So there's no point, you know, I've gone to people's homes and they've got like a hundred pairs of shoes that they can't wear, but they don't have the three pairs that you need for every wardrobe to make it work. Everybody needs three pairs of shoes that can actually make their whole wardrobe work. But it's it takes time. Like shopping, there's a science to shopping. And you know, the thing is I'm in the stores constantly. People like me are other image consultants. And we're always and people who love to shop. There's there's women who love to shop. If you have any of those kind of friends and they have good taste, it's often and they're they're good at dressing other people, then send them to me because I'd like to train them. But also they they could sometimes be a big help because they've been to the stores and there's certain stores for different people and you want to shop for shoes at peak inventory time, which is the beginning of the fall, which is now, and the beginning of the spring, summer, because then you can get every size and every color. Some people have to go to the States, especially somebody was mentioning their very small feet or very large feet. That it's, you just need to shop in the States to get selection. And sometimes there's stores, you find a couple of stores that actually carry smaller sizes and you talk to those people and tell them that you're a smaller size and what you're looking for and they'll, they'll actually help you try to um, specifically order things in. Yes. So you mentioned shopping your sister. What's your comment shopping online? Shopping online. Oh my goodness. Okay. There's a lot of mistakes in people's closets from shopping online. <laughs> and the thing about shopping online is people don't return them. Uh, they, some websites they accept returns, you know, like uh, they even yes. send you a free uh, yeah. shipping like a return. Especially yes. if you buy from the big brand. Like I can buy from Reebok one day uh -huh. and the uh, shoes were small, didn't fit well, and they, they refund me even for the return. That's excellent. Yes. But when people have to find a box and wrap it all up and take it there, and you know, people just are so busy. Or, or they keep the, the, you know, people who shopped online, the tags are still on it. And, you know, they got the boxes stacked up for like, you know, months and months. I'm just like, are you ever going to return those? And I'm like, I don't really think I can. But they can't throw them out either. So mm -hmm. the thing about when you're shopping in a store and you try on clothes, they work or they don't work. Have you ever tried on something where there's like, it has great hanger appeal and you're thinking, oh, I can't really afford it, but you try it on and it doesn't work anyways. So imagine shopping online. Like, I mean, I personally, I've tried it a few times because there are a few good online shoppers and I'm like, I should try that. Well, anything I've ever ordered online never fits properly. Oh, well, but trust me, you save a lot of money. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it takes a lot. Well, people think it's faster, but it's better. You know, the thing about shopping, you know, people think that people who know who shop 
They're just really good at it. They have an eye and they just go shopping. Okay, those people are shopping a lot or they're very strategically shopping, how I talk about in my book. Because, you know, it's like shopping with a plan, how I just said about going through your closet, figuring out what you need, making a list. You're looking for that basic black pant that you don't want six pairs of black pants. You want one basic black pant that goes through your whole wardrobe. So that means you need to take your clothes with you if you're going to try them on because and try all your different tops that you're going to wear with those pants and the shoes. And you have to get the shoes because a lot of people have great clothes, but they don't have the right shoes to go with it. So the other thing I always say to people, I'm really surprised that people don't have a full length mirror in their house. This full length mirror, how can you possibly know how you look? Because it's the shoes that will make or break the outfit. So you've got to be able to check yourself out when you go out the door and see. And then, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, there's something, the shoes aren't working. And then you can go and look for shoes specifically for that. Anyone have any questions about that? About shopping? Okay, good. Just a curiosity, why do men hate it and women love it? Oh, men don't have the fashion trend. Some of them do. <laughs> but you know, it's not like, it's not like men, whatever, you know, they made it very simple for men. Like they have a couple of necklines, they have a few fabrics. They don't have, we have all the prints, the different fabrics, the sleeves, the collars. We have like a million different kinds of jackets and all kinds of styles. And I mean, it's a nightmare, like different lengths. I mean, men basically, you know the biggest problems I find with men? Okay, for one thing, if I if I help men with their closets, it has to be fast and shopping has to be fast. And I guarantee I can be in and out of there. I'll do all the pre-shopping, I'll have you in and out of a store, your whole wardrobe done, and I'll figure out where we're gonna go. And it's very simple because it's like they're easy to fit too, right? They don't have like the men's style assessment is two pages long, the women's is eight pages long. Because women have a lot of emotion about how they feel about things. No, not all women. Some women are just very, don't, they, I don't think they have a fashion gene either, but that's fine. But a lot of women, I can get them interested. It's just that someone has to show them the clothes and then they have an opinion. Because women do have an opinion of what they like. So once I kind of know exactly what they like and don't like, it's easier. But, you know, basically with men, they need black jeans, blue jeans, black pants. They need a suit. They need some different shirts, a couple of maybe polo shirts. And the biggest thing men need is sports jackets. The thing about, about men is they can get a sports jacket that can take, can go over all the clothes. So it can take from, take them from jeans to business casual to dressy casual and smart. Women can't really do that. You know, and we also have to have more changes of clothes. So anyways, that's my plug for men's clothing. But if you want to know more about it, then uh, talk to me about that. And then schedule fitness and fun. So we all know when we exercise, we actually feel better and we have more energy. And, you know, get, find something, something that you'd like to do. So I'm not an athlete. Like, I have friends that love team sports. So they like playing soccer and hockey. And me personally, I like deep water aqua fit. And I do a little bit of running and cycling. But that's kind of it. But, I, you know, I love those kind of things. And I do the sun run once a year. So find something that you actually enjoy doing. And then just do that. So are there any entrepreneurs in the room here who can actually relate to having to schedule something or it just doesn't happen? Yes. Okay, so um, when you have a vision and you're passionate about what you do and you're your own boss, then I don't know, like I could work 24 seven. Like I could, I could be all work and no play. So I find I even have to schedule fun activities into my, um, into my life, like, you know, time with my family and, um, you know, going to concerts and movies and, you know, meeting people for breakfast and having people over for meals to actually add, to actually have balance in my life. Does anyone else feel like they have to do things like that too? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, good. good. Okay, good. And the third one is to prioritize um, self-care or the Fifth one, prioritize self-care. So this includes taking care of all aspects of your appearance from daily grooming to seasonal wardrobe reviews. So just as with fitness, it's so simple to add, um, to, to let self-care get to the very bottom of the pile and just kind of never really get around to it. Because there's so many other uh, pressing priorities that we have. So scheduling is actually the key to being consistent with self-care. So um, hair is, is your number one accessory. 
and it's the one place where you shouldn't compromise. And I know a lot of people are actually married to their hairdressers, even if they're not good hairdressers. And when I suggest, you know, you should check out my hairdresser here, we'll just go one time, and we're, we're doing this whole makeover thing, and you can just go there, we'll get a fabulous haircut, and then we'll you can go back to your hairdresser. And they're like, no, I couldn't. Are you kidding? She'll never understand. But the, the thing is, if you have a horrible haircut, then you need to at least experience what a great haircut um, is, and then take take the, you know, and then go back to your hairdresser. Because a lot of times hairdressers are just doing what you've kind of told them to do. Because women are, hairdressers know that it's the hardest thing to change. So if you change somebody's hairstyle and they don't like it, then they're never coming back to you again. And makeup is the other thing too. It, you need need to learn how to do light, tasteful makeup. And for getting boomy, boomy in the morning, it's so boring putting on the same makeup over and over. So if you get like a, you know, get kind of a refresher, then it makes it a lot more fun. Because nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, yes, I get to do my hair, my makeup, have a shower, <laughs> all over. Like nobody, you know, people who have the fashion gene. So here are two clients of mine who had transformations, hair transformations. So this is woman on the left here. Okay, what do you think her job is? House cleaner? <laughs> what do you think? Jobless? Jobless. She is. Yes. What do you think her job was when she had a job? Bookkeeper. Accountant. Yeah. Librarian. Yeah. Well, what happened with her is she worked for a company for 25 years and then the company downsized. And so there's this company that takes all these people that and tries to get them jobs. But every time this woman went on a job interview, she never got called back. So they were kind of desperate after 50 job interviews that she wasn't getting, maybe not quite that many, but a lot. And so they sent her to me. And so of course she didn't want to get her hair cut because that's like her pride and joy. And her husband didn't want her having her hair cut. And so the thing is, do you want the job or do you want to look how you want to look? So of course, this is like one of those drastic makeovers that you see like in magazines or on TV. So we finally got her to cut her hair and she got two instant job off offers so that she was instantly employed again. And we just picked out a couple of outfits that she could wear that fit her budget. And there, she's just like a totally different person. How did she feel? Yes, okay. Well, you know, it's really funny. She was very happy to have the job, but I'm not, I haven't seen her since then, and I'm not so sure she didn't grow her hair back again. <laughs> because some people get out of their comfort zone, they do these makeovers, and then they go back to their old ways if they don't stick around and constantly <coughs> reinforcement to get, to make the, their comfort zone kind of their new, the new norm. But um, a lot of people do, it does stick with them, especially when they come to somebody to actually, you know, because they actually want your help. So this woman, she is from Seattle. She's a very successful uh, woman and she had um, has a financial investment business and she came to speak to a women's networking group. And she was telling us how she was gonna go into 50 states in 50 weeks. And she's gonna be talking about financial investment. So at the end of the talk, I thought, what have I got to lose? So I went up to her and said, you should come back for the day and we could do a complete makeover so we can make you look like the product that you're selling. So she did, and you see, what I want to show with this is how you can actually have short hair and have it in a great style. A lot of people say this is the only style I can wear. My hair is really thin and it just kind of sticks to my head. But if you have a great stylist and they teach you how to use products and they give you a great cut, see how she has the same hair but it actually looks a bit longer. And then we changed her glasses and we gave light tasteful makeup and we gave her clothes that look like an executive. So she only has two outfits to do all those, uh, the, all that traveling but she just looks fabulous. Can you see that? And even the accessories, right? Like just your accessories are your statement. So you need to make sure that you don't, uh, you know, if you're an artsy kind of person, there's actually a uniform for business. You know, the guy that works at Tim Hortons or, you know, a sports team, they don't, they don't go, yes, I want to wear this out. They do the sports team. But you know, whoever is wearing a uniform, you know, the UPS guy, they don't want to be wearing a uniform. There's actually a uniform for business. So you can say, I don't want to wear the uniform, but then it looks like you don't actually understand the whole um, culture. language, culture of business, yes. And then makeup. Makeup's really important that you have light like, tasteful makeup. This is a, a woman, um, Claire. She's a, uh, an author, 
and she's just written this book. And so she needs the pool and she's doing a massive, did a massive book launch. And so we did her whole makeover for her. And Claire says, I love my new makeup routine and it only takes five minutes. That's the thing. Your makeup routine should look fabulous and only take five minutes. I enjoyed the makeover process thoroughly from right sizing my current wardrobe to clothes shopping to helping style a photo shoot for my book launch. And here we have Kale. He was a presenter at the last Get Inspired Talks. And uh, I want to say something about facial hair here. So um, for business or for presenting, no facial hair is actually the best. But facial hair is very trendy right now. So if you want like the counselor kind of look, or you're in a creative or marketing field, then you can have, then it's more acceptable to have facial hair. But as men get older too, then the facial hair gets, gets um, thinner. So that means you have to keep it quite short. So, um, salt and pepper as well. Pardon me? Go with those salt and pepper? Yes. And sometimes that looks really good, but if it doesn't look good, then it's better to just have no facial hair. So, Cal says, Patty helped me clean up my image and look more professional, and her guidance actually improved my confidence on stage. It actually made me feel better. It's that old saying, when you look good, you feel good. Definitely increased my confidence and helped me smile more. So, he took the coaching really well. And uh, he could have kept a little bit of his facial hair, but he chose to, to um, shave it off for that. For that. But you, can, you see, you need to have less because otherwise he looks, um, what, what do you think it looks like if you have too much facial hair like on the left? Heavier, heavier yes. Closed, more closed too. And older. Older, yes. And do you think it's like, a, do you think he looks richer? Does no. he look like he has money? And you know, the thing about men too, sometimes they get lazy with their facial hair. So if you're going to have facial hair, you've got to have it impeccable, impeccably groomed. Sorry, this question is, I, I usually keep uh, my facial hair because it makes me a little bit looks uh, older. You know? Yes. So in business, I kind of like the, the thing that you have more experience, right? So <laughs> right. if you, if I shave, you know, I will probably look like 22, 23 years old, even though I'm 29. So I don't know, like uh, sometimes it's pretty challenging, you know, like uh, shaving, uh, you know, versus not shaving because you still want to look presentable. You want to look like more experienced. Uh -huh. So, you know, the thing is the light's quite bright right here, right here, so I can't really see, but I'll look at you later and just see. All right, I appreciate the comment. <laughs> yes, good. good. And always ask people, you know, because unasked for advice is taken as quote criticism. So even people they're thinking, I wish they would shave that off, or why doesn't somebody close to them tell them? Unless you ask, people aren't just gonna tell you. They care too much about the relationship to um to and they think, well, the person obviously sees it. Either they don't care or they're they or they just want to do what they want to do. Okay, and so um, eyewear. So eyewear is the most important personal accessory. And it shouldn't be that you have to wear glasses. It's that you get to wear glasses. The thing is, it's the one thing that if I can change somebody's glasses, then I can change their whole look. It, it makes such an impact. And um, I, I'm always excited when I meet somebody and they have glasses that are a bit dated. I'm like, are those like old glasses? And sometimes they've just bought them. Like what I find in, when you go to eyewear, and that's sad, right? Because they're always expensive. And so when you go to eyewear stores, you know, a lot of times they'll be, um, they, they sell you what you've just bought. Like they don't sell you the most current because unless you have great support, it's hard to get out of your comfort zone. And if you take those glasses back because you don't like them, which every eyewear store who's, you know, a good quality one, they'll always take them back. If they sell you something that's too advanced for you, and you take it back, that's a big expense to them. And they know if they sell you something that's in your comfort zone, that like what you just had before, they're going to be totally happy. So it's one of the hardest things I have to change with people. But, you know, I'm in a great job because people are paying to come to me for my advice. So, you know, I can push very hard and uh, they usually go with the, my advice. But usually I say with clothes and everything, you know, if you don't like this outfit or you don't like that, just push back, just tell me everything. Because if you don't like this, you don't like that, there'll be clothes that you will like and will eventually, out of all the clothes available, you can find you great clothes. But things like, like um, glasses, one thing that there's kind of a look, right? Whatever's current and you, you don't want to be at the end of the trend. Like things go in five to seven year trends. You don't want to be, you know, just buying something that's almost out. You want to be always a little bit on the edge. And if you, if you get by things, like my experience is if I 
choose things for people and they look fabulous, everyone's going to agree. Maybe not the people closest to them because it's the hardest thing for somebody close to you to have them change their look. But they get so much positive feedback that eventually they're like, hmm, I kind of like that. So here's um, Shailene, and she was going through a whole transition too. But with her glasses, I wanted to show you this because a lot of people have no frames or very thin frames because they think that it makes it look like they don't have glasses on. But there's no way to dress in a neutral fashion because everything you wear makes some kind of statement. So what do you think about her on the left here? What kind of statement does this make? What do you think about the way she looks? She's going to blah. Blah, yes. Vanilla. Perfect, yes. Shy. Shy, yeah. Does she look current? Mm -hmm. No. She looks like a child, almost. Like a child, yes. Does she look like, if you were to talk to her, she'd be on the leading edge of whatever her field was? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. And see, here's her on the left. This is as big as we could go with her. The thing about any bigger frames is they actually, especially now with these bigger frames, is they actually show up the eye. So when you're talking to somebody, you can actually directly see them in the eye. Or you know what I mean? There's, their eyes show up. And then this is Ellen here. And uh, yes, so um, with her eyewear too, see how it's bigger? And now the thing about buying eyewear online, that is, I don't even know how that works. Because when, um, when I take people to the eyewear store, I pick what's fashion, what the look is, but the people I work with in the store, they know exactly how things fit. So people who buy things online, sometimes they're a little too wide or, you know, they're a little too low here. Or they might be big, but they're not quite right. So this just shows you when you actually get glasses that fit perfectly and they're the right look, it's just a very rich look. And can you see what else we did here with her transformation? Yeah, there was an air coat. Yes. What does she look like on the left? Nanny. Pardon me? Nanny. Nanny, yes. <laughs> yes. She's a nanny? She's what? Is she a nanny? No, she's not a nanny. Okay. Social worker. I think she follow a social worker. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the thing is, does she look like, she looks so much more like with it on the right. And see, even her hair, right? Like a lot of times people get about the right length that they should have. But they don't have the style and if they don't have, if someone doesn't teach them how to actually put products you can get a great hairstyle and if you don't put a little bit of time into it then the, the, yeah, you can't really get the look you need someone to actually teach you how to do that and you know to have the right color and see even makeup right just light tasteful makeup that doesn't look like she has a ton of makeup on but just looks better and the other thing too is to buy when you're building a wardrobe buy solids before you buy prints because that actually has more impact mm -hmm. And Ellen said she wanted a more professional look and she wanted to learn how to have a more efficient way of buying clothes when she came. And uh, Ellen said, at first I wasn't sure, but I love my new glasses. See, another person who didn't like her glasses. This has been a great investment. I present a lot better and feel better about myself. And here's Cal. He was um, one of the speakers at the last Get Inspired Talks. And Cal says, I think eyewear for men is an important accessory. I wasn't sure about my glasses. He didn't like his either. That Patty had selected at first, but they really did help make my look, and I received many comments on them. This look will help me build credibility as a speaker and consultant, so I think it was definitely the right choice. So what about him on the left? If he was up on the stage speaking, what would you think? Does he, does he have presence? No. What, what is it that doesn't work? Purple. Pardon me? Purple. Purple? Yep, the purple's Never. dark. Everything. Yeah. I love it. See, the thing about men too with hairstyles, right? They think they're just going to go get a, an inexpensive cut and they're going to, men don't go often enough to get their hair cut. So you got to find somebody who can give you a good cut. It's way less expensive for men too to have haircuts, but still it does cost something. But see the difference in his hairstyle? You know, it's just a little thing. He doesn't even have, men don't even have to worry about product and getting the curl and oh my goodness, it's so much simpler. And then see the glasses, right? That just looks so much better. And the thing about sports jackets, as I was saying, how important it is for men to wear jackets, because for everybody wearing a jacket, it gives you credibility. And see, he just has a presence. So him on the right here, are, are you more thinking that he's kind of dressed for the occasion and he's dressed appropriately? Yeah. yeah. You know, and a lot of men who even go to weddings don't even have sports jackets, let alone a suit. So, you know, that's just like, men only have to buy one outfit. It's just so simple and so much less expensive. 
but the thing is to buy the best quality you can afford because quality really does make a difference. And somebody was asking a question about, um, about whether they should tailor, get a tailored suit or whether they should buy it off the rack. Yeah. Okay, so if you are a small, if you are like bigger or smaller than the average cut off the, off the yeah, racks, get it, get it, get it designed, like get it, um, you know, specially made because they do it really good in shirts. They make it fit perfectly for you. So it's really well worth it. But the other thing too, about well, men's suiting, you know, a lot of times when men go into a store, I always say that's the third suit, right? Because they'll, sometimes you'll buy two, they'll get you one free. The first one is the black suit or the charcoal. The next suit is the navy suit. Perfect suits work everywhere. The next suit is the brown plaid. But because they have to sell you something different, you're not going to buy three that are the same. So I always say like, just buy the best, like buy. So don't go and be buying pinstripes and different kinds of things. Buy the solid colors first. And so if after this presentation, you feel like I really do need some clothes, invest in what you need because investing in your wardrobe is a small investment for a great gain. Like it is probably the one, if I could just say the market, the best marketing tool you could ever have. Because when you walk into a room, uh, um, as this gentleman here was saying, you want to stand out. You want to be noticed. You don't have to be, you know, it, like in a sea of people that look like vanilla, you just want to stand out. So when it's your turn, or there's a whole bunch of people, you know, have the same expertise as you, you know, people don't even know why they're attracted. You know, that's why on magazines, they have the most attractive people, you know, because people don't want to see people that aren't well-groomed or not put together or not matching their style. Of course, they put all the glamour and the movie stars and everything on there, but every person looks fabulous. Like if they actually dress for their style, and they do their grooming, every person can stand out. Sometimes the people that you think are less attractive than the movie star are actually more attractive. They're more, it's more compelling. They have more influence because they're more interesting. So if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help, everything's at imagestrategist.com, all my different packages. I have an online makeover package and uh, that kind of looks at every area of your appearance and gives you a plan to actually get a fresh new look. Does anyone have any questions? Can you show the previous slide? Yes. Patty, how do you do an online makeover? What does that mean? Do you Excellent do it all question. online, send you pictures? No, we do it by Skype or Zoom. Oh, Skype. I've been doing a lot by okay, Zoom. Got it. All right. Okay. How the heck do you do that? No, it's really good. They have to do their own shopping. That's the only thing, but they have a very clear plan of what they're looking for and talk about budget and research stores and um, cities or wherever they are. Yes. Does the online makeover package include shopping? No, it doesn't mm -hmm. include shopping because it will be a good price, it be a good price with the shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, exactly. yes. If uh, you have a makeover, does wonders for women's appearance. Yes. Why don't men use makeup? Why don't men use makeup? Oh my goodness. We can just get them to do their hair and their clothing <laughs> and get their clothes. They look fabulous. For some reason, men don't need makeup. They look fabulous without makeup. So, um, like for, for me, I, I think the single most important item uh, for myself, at least, you know, is a watch, you know. Even though I don't have expensive watch yet, but yes. like I want to ask you, like for guys, you know, like what's the, the number one item they must have, you know, they must really invest on from your perspective? Yes. Yeah, so you were just saying about how a watch is very important to you. Yes. A watch is very important, and a lot of people just use their phones these days. But you know, men can't have a lot of accessories, and even for women, right? It's a great, um, it's a great accessory statement. The thing about about your um, accessories is they should be definitely have to be leather because people do notice that, and shoes too. Like, um, people notice men's shoes. So they gotta be clean, polished, and in good in good repair. Did you have any other questions about I that? I don't know, that's all good. Yeah. Okay. When you say leather, what about them? Are you referring also to watches? Do no. you prefer leather straps to leather? No, it doesn't matter about that. I'm just thinking of accessories like briefcases and portfolios and things like that. Belts, shoes, yeah. You mentioned that there was a big question. Yes. Yes. So 
I did I tell you about the business uniform for men, right? Right. Okay, so for men, it's the jeans, the black jeans, the blue jeans, the black pants, the um, different shirts, a couple of polo sweaters, or you know that kind of thing. Ja uh, sports jacket and a suit. Those are like the main pieces. For women, there's like a ten-piece wardrobe that makes forty different outfits. So it's basically dark, dark jacket, a light jacket, a couple of bottoms. You don't need a ton of bottoms either. It's best to dress from the waist up because of how people see you. You know, a few different shoes, casual shoe, uh, everyday kind of running around shoe, something for evening, but that goes with your whole wardrobe. And then uh, for women, it's like jackets, um, tops, so that allows us in the, the same colors as your jackets. I don't know if this is kind of hard to explain but to get the picture in your mind. And then a number of different fashion colors in the tops. That's like a basic, basic wardrobe that gives you lots of outfits. Yes, buy metal before you buy um, color for sure. And if you have like a short necklace, a long necklace, a few different earrings and belts, a couple of belts or, or uh, whatever and uh, legwear. You need a nightshade nylon and nude nylon. And if you're gonna wear nylons, I always encourage women to wear nylons, especially for presentation kind of things or evening. I really have a hard time getting younger women to do that. Their, their legs are a lot um, in better shape a lot of times. And women, as they get older, it just looks far more polished. You know, you can just stand out. You can have like a great outfit just by wearing nylons, but sometimes that's a bit of a challenge getting people to do that. Yes. What are your thoughts on like uh, earrings for men? Yes. Okay. It's uh, it's 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 more trendy. It depends what kind of field you're in. If you're a creative or marketing kind of field, you can get away with that. And you know, there's a fine line here between um, you know going really trendy and going with your personality or doing doing what's part of the uniform, what people want. You know, I say it's best to dress for 90% agreement. The point is you can wear whatever you want, right? If you really want to do that, but you know, it'll stop you from making as much money. It'll, it'll limit the people that are going to work with you because people have like a gut feeling. So that's why even prints, prints, everybody has an opinion about a print, a subconscious opinion. They like it or they don't like it. And if you're buying cheaper quality clothes, then the prints aren't as good. If you're gonna buy prints, buy them in the best quality you can afford because they're kind of inspiring. But you know, if you're dressing very chic, say for women, you know, women who dress in Paris, sometimes people don't like that look because it's they're not used to the print in it. But if you wear solids, everyone likes solids. You can't, you can't no one's ever offended. Eddie. Thank you. That was eye-opening in a good way and a bad way. And Ion Connect, thank you very much for making this production possible.